Let me start with this simple yet profound idea. Your personality, how you think, feel, and act shapes your reality. Who you are right now in this moment is the result of all the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors you've repeated over time. Everything you experience in your life, your personal reality, is an extension of your inner world. It's not shaped by your parents, your job, or the things that happened to you in the past. Instead, you are the architect of your life. Here's the kicker. If you keep thinking the same thoughts, feeling the same emotions, and acting in the same way, you'll keep creating the same reality. This is where most people get stuck. They want to change their life, but they try to do it while holding on to the same old personality. It's like trying to build a new house with the same old broken bricks. If you want to change your life, you have to change yourself first. You must become someone else. Now here's the real challenge. Most of our thoughts are tied to memories of the past. When you think about problems or situations you're facing, you're often thinking from the lens of past experiences. These memories are tightly linked to emotions, frustration, fear, regret, or sadness. So when you revisit those thoughts, your body relives those emotions as if they are happening right now. You're not just stuck mentally in the past, your body is physically stuck there too. And here's where the science kicks in. Your body doesn't know the difference between a real event and a memory. It reacts to thoughts the same way it reacts to actual experiences. So if you're constantly revisiting negative emotions, your body lives in the past, even though time is moving forward. You may think you've moved on, but in reality, your physiology is still anchored to old emotional responses. This leads us to a fundamental truth. To create a new future, you must break free from the emotions and thoughts that tie you to your past. It's not just about wishing for a better life. It's about becoming a new version of yourself, thinking differently, feeling differently, and acting differently. Now let's dive into the concept of stress and how it can keep you trapped in the past. Stress triggers a set of survival responses in the body. Fear, anger, frustration, anxiety, guilt. These emotions are the byproducts of the stress response. In the short term, this response is adaptive. It helps you survive. But when stress becomes chronic, when you're constantly activating this response, it starts to work against you. Consider this. Every time you encounter a stressful situation, whether it's a fight with a partner, a challenging day at work, or a news story that makes you angry, your body experiences a rush of adrenaline. It's like a shot of energy that helps you feel alive. Over time, this becomes a pattern and your body starts to crave it. It becomes dependent on these stress hormones and before you know it, you're addicted to the rush of stress. This is emotional addiction and it's incredibly common. Just like any addiction, it becomes something you think you can't stop. Even when you know it's harmful, you find yourself stuck in the same loop, repeating the same emotional patterns. Many people are addicted to the feelings of anger, frustration, or fear without even realizing it. They use these emotions to reaffirm their sense of identity because it's what they know. Here's the powerful insight. Just by thinking about a stressful situation, you can trigger the same physiological response as if the event were happening in real time. What was once a useful survival mechanism has now become harmful, constantly pulling you back into the same emotional states. You end up recreating the same reality day after day simply because your body is addicted to those emotions. The good news is you can break free from this cycle, but it requires awareness. The moment you decide to stop thinking, feeling, and acting the same way, you step into a new version of yourself. And that's when your reality starts to change. Stress is like a signal in the body, telling you that something is out of balance. In small doses, it's useful, but when it becomes chronic, it disrupts your body's natural state of order, or homeostasis. Over time, this imbalance can lead to disease, both mentally and physically. When you remain in stress, the body never gets the chance to return to its natural harmony. Think about this for a moment. 
the emotions we often associate with stress, fear, anger, frustration, are not just fleeting feelings. They are chemical records of past experiences. When we live in these emotions, we're living in the past. Instead of creating our future, we're reliving old memories over and over again. Our emotions and our behaviors become automated, forming unconscious habits that we don't even realize are running the show. That's why, to change our personal reality, we have to change our personality. We have to start teaching ourselves new ways to think, feel, and act. This isn't just about learning new information. It's about embodying it. When you learn something new and teach it to someone else, you reinforce the circuits in your brain. You begin to make it a part of who you are. But here's the kicker. If you change your personality, how you think, feel, and act, your biology changes too. Your brain starts to rewire itself. Your body begins to heal. You shift out of the emotional patterns of the past and create a new state of being. This can happen faster than you might think, sometimes in as little as a week. Let's take a powerful example. People with dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder, often have radically different biological responses depending on which personality they are in. Someone might be allergic to peanuts in one personality, but not in another. This shows us the profound impact our mind and personality have on our biology. When you truly change who you are, your body follows suit. This is why when people experience spontaneous healing or deep transformation, they often say things like, that disease belonged to the old me. They've become someone else, and in doing so, they've shifted their biology. When you stop living in the past, you stop recreating the same reality, and that's when real change happens. So how do we actually do this? How do we change those unconscious patterns that are keeping us stuck in the past? It starts with becoming aware of your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. You have to start catching yourself before you slip back into those old familiar patterns. Most people live on autopilot, repeating the same thoughts, feelings, and behaviors without even realizing it. The key is to become so conscious of these unconscious habits that you can stop them before they take over. It's about breaking the habit of being yourself. Every time you catch yourself falling into the same emotional pattern, whether it's frustration, impatience, or self-doubt, you're given a choice. You can continue down that old familiar road, or you can choose a new thought, a new feeling, a new behavior. When we talk about the connection between brainwave states and different levels of consciousness, it's important to recognize how this awareness leads us into greater possibilities of personal transformation. Let's break it down in a simple way. You're sitting here and I'm over here and we seem separate, right? In this three-dimensional world, we're locked into the sensory experience. Our senses, what we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, are our plugs into this physical reality. It's a lot for the brain to process, and its job is to make sense of it all, creating meaning from what's happening around us and within us. Now, when you're fully engaged with your environment, your brain is operating in what's called beta brainwave states. In beta, you're awake, alert, and present, like we are right now. We're having this conversation, paying attention to each other, and everything seems fine. But if I told you we're about to give you a test with 100 questions, your brain would immediately become more aroused, and you'd shift into a higher level of beta you'd become more focused, alert, and ready to act. But let's take it a step further. If you were under stress, feeling anxious, angry, or overwhelmed, your brain would push into what's called high beta. This is where most people operate when they're in survival mode. In high beta, the brain waves become fast and chaotic, and suddenly all your focus is on the body, the environment, and time. You're worrying about your next move, the people around you, and the pressures of time much like when our ancestors were running from predators. This heightened state of stress locks us into survival. When we can't control or predict things, or we perceive that something bad might happen, we spiral further into high beta. Our brain waves get disorganized and different areas of the brain stop communicating effectively. It's like a storm in your brain. 
you become narrow focused, obsessive, and stuck in loops of worry and fear. That's why people turn to external distractions, whether it's social media, substances, or other forms of stimulation, to temporarily escape that feeling. But here's where the real opportunity lies, learning to change your brainwave state consciously. What if, instead of focusing outward, you shift your attention inward? When you stop analyzing and thinking, when you move away from that obsessive focus on the physical, material world, something magical happens. You start to relax. The brain begins to slow down, and you enter a more creative, imaginative state. When we can move from that overactive beta state into a more relaxed alpha or theta state, the brain becomes more coherent. In alpha, you're still awake, but the chatter of the mind quiets down. You start thinking in pictures, imagining new possibilities, and the inner world becomes more real than the outer. When you go even deeper into theta, this is where true change happens. Theta is a deeply hypnotic state where the door between the conscious and subconscious mind opens. In this state, you are highly suggestible, meaning you can begin to reprogram old habits and beliefs. The analytical mind that keeps us stuck is suppressed, and the thoughts and intentions we hold can literally begin to shape our biology. The body listens and responds to the new signals being sent from the brain, creating a whole new internal environment. Now let's talk about the heart, because this is where it gets powerful. When we guide people into these deeper states and they relax into their heart, the body begins to shift from survival to creation. The heart, as the creative center, sends a coherent wave of energy to the brain, which moves the brain into these beautiful, synchronized states. It's as if the heart resets the emotional baseline, signaling to the brain that the trauma is over, that the stress can be released. In this space, you're no longer a body in an environment stuck in time. You become pure consciousness. No body, no one, no thing, nowhere, no time. This is where true transformation happens. The body, which was once locked into survival, begins to heal. The heart and brain come into harmony, and the body moves back into balance, into homeostasis. The goal, then, is to teach people how to stay in these coherent states, to practice and sustain them until they become second nature. And when you master that, when you can move from beta to alpha into theta and even touch delta without falling asleep, you are accessing the operating system. You are reprogramming the subconscious and unlocking the true power of the mind to heal, create, and transform your life. It's a journey from survival to creation, from matter to energy, from separation to oneness. And when you experience that shift, you realize that the outer world no longer controls your inner state. You do. That's when the magic begins.